my daughter died in prison. She was only 18. And she got to the prison on the Friday. She was dead the following night. And in that 24 hours, she was vomiting, fitting, having cardiac arrests, bleeding from the nose and mouth at the point of death. And even though they knew she'd overdosed, several members of staff, including a nurse, walked out of the cell and locked the door on her. Sarah Campbell was the third of six women to die at Style Prison in Cheshire in just one year. We asked if we could spend time inside the prison to find out what caused these women to take their own lives. After the sixth woman died, a new governor was brought in. But as the morning roll call of events suggests, the prison comes close to further tragedy nearly every day. Good morning, everybody. 16.52 hours, a cold red on wing. Miss R cut her arm with a razor. 24.5 hours, Miss K passed away to a member of staff. 2200 hours, Miss P, very agitated on CSR. 2230 hours, there was a cold blue on weight wing. Miss H had tied a ligature around her neck. November 3, November 4, and the healthcare in attendance. Twenty-three, twenty-five hours, cold blue on weight wing. Miss S had tied two tight ligatures around her neck. Oscar 1, November 3, and November 6 attended. At 23.35 hours, assistance required for Miss F not responding. At 23.44 hours, a cold blue on weight wing. Miss H had a plastic bag over her head. At 23.55 hours, a cold blue on weight wing. Miss S had tied a ligature. Requested to move to safer cell and relocate to text 102. There was a cold blue and Miss W had a plastic paper lodged in her throat. And that's the events of the evening. During the night, staff were called to 12 separate incidents, and during the six weeks in which this documentary was filmed, there were over 150 incidents of self-harm or attempted suicide. In the last 10 years, the number of women in prison has more than doubled, and over 70 women have killed themselves. Governor Steve Hall is under no illusions about what he's up against. All female prisons are having to deal with very, very disturbed women coming into custody, very high levels of self-harm, and inevitably deaths. You know, often in the morning, we reflect on the fact that somebody nearly died last night. We reflect on that on a very regular basis here. Thank you. Not bad. At Style, 40% of the population will have some sort of mental health issue of that group. Around about 15 to 20 percent will have a serious diagnosable mental health issue. Hi, it's Dave Hall. Thank you. 30 percent of them will have self-harmed before they even arrived in custody. Good morning. As many as 60 percent will have suffered some form of sexual or physical abuse. Watch back, or none of you be getting left without. <laughs> About 80% of our population are significant drug users and been using drugs for long periods of time. Safe custody has become our number one priority. Now, you'd expect me to say it's about preventing crime, but it's not. It's about keeping people alive. Deep breaths, come on, big deep breaths. Bear. Beverly, suck 
Come on, Beth. Beth, come on. No. Please. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, well yeah. done. The wing mainly holds women on remand. Prisoners who are detoxing from drugs and alcohol and known self-harmers are monitored regularly. I'm Amanda Downton. I've been a self-harmer since I was nine years old. Some days I could do it three, four times a day. Sometimes it could be 10 or 11. We normally suit you, Amanda, but her skin's rather tough, so. That all kicked off when I was abused. It's just the way I can express the way I'm feeling about the times, the flashbacks, and it's the only way to get him out of my head, really. So I'll just get hold of whatever I can to use. Razor blades, glass, plastic, anything. We've done everything with Amanda. We've, we've tried the sitting down, talking, the nice approach. We've, the cold approach, just get on with it, put the dressing on. But we're just hopeless. We just know what to do with her, basically. A prolific self-harmer has recently been given a three-year sentence. I've been here and in prison three times. I've spent ten years in Broadmoor. They told me I've got a borderline personality disorder, but not actually what, what it is. I've not been in trouble for five years. This time I was just upset of my dad dying. Doctor wouldn't come out the day after my dad died, so I was very angry, upset. And I'd just come off all my medication. I phoned the doctor up and threatened to kill him on the phone. I made about three threats. I can't believe I got three yet. Uh, I feel like, you know, I've lost my dad. I've lost my dog, I might lose my flat. You know, just for one threat. Since I've come back in the court, I've tried to hang myself. I've ligature twice. I've caught myself and took an overdose. Sometimes I think it's a cry for help, and sometimes I do, do feel like I want to kill myself. Right, we've got a lady in a cell that's actually throwing ex excrement through a window. So what we do now is we deal with this as a dirty protest. I believe from speaking to staff that she's got mental health issues. Why are you throwing excrement through the window? Uh, we can't leave her on the way. We're going to take her down to the care and separation unit. There are no longer enough places in the community to manage women who have mental health problems, and so they end up in prison. And it, and it is inevitable in some cases that, that those women will get worse whilst they're in prison, either because we can't provide the level of treatment that they need, or because this environment exacerbates their condition, makes them actually worse. It smells incredible, such as obviously still, even though she's been down here for what, 45 minutes? She's still doing whatever she's doing. Like many self-harmers, Flo's behaviour stems from a difficult childhood. I just want to escape from the person I am. And I feel like if I punish myself, that nobody else can punish me. You know, if you understand what that means. Why do you need to punish yourself? Well, I must need to be punished for the way I got brought up. Hit, abused, children's home. All the time, you're bad. And we don't want you and drummed in the head all the time. never forgiven for what they did to me and why it went on and nobody did nothing about it. I've been in that hospital since about 15 or 16 years old. Schizophrenia, 
borderline personality disorder, split personality, I've had all sorts. I don't really understand it all. Probably personality disorder, yeah. One minute I'm up, the next minute I'm down. It's just like a nightmare for me. Most dangerous time in the prison when into this level of intensity of self harm is not normal. And one of the fears, I think, for me and, and colleagues is that we might be actually perpetuating that level of self-harm by bringing together some of the most uh, damaged people in society. And there is a real danger that we normalise that behaviour and people feed off each other. It's a sense of security, it's what other people do, it's how you get attention. And, yeah, there's, of course, there's a real risk that a very small group of women will massively impact on a prisoner what we're really here to do. During the night, prison staff dealt with seven incidents of ligaturing, two self-inflicted burnings, and two women who cut themselves. The more stable prisoners are held in the more relaxed environment of the houses left over from the orphanage, the site the prison was built on. My name's Karen and I'm currently in for street robbery. I have altogether now served two years, eight months, and I've got out in three weeks, and I can start moving forward. My mum went to hospital when I was three years old. Um, we used to go and visit my mum twice a year in Broadmoor. When I was 14 years old, I found my dad dead. Um, I went into children's homes, foster parents, and that's where I very first started taking drugs and self-harming. It's two weeks since the woman being treated as a dirty protester was brought down to the CSRU. I don't think she's aware really of what she's doing or why she's doing it. The opinion is that she is critically in need of a hospital bed. So we have another three who are critically in need of a hospital bed. Until there's a bed in the finances, she's going nowhere. I think we treat them to the best of our ability, but we're not mental health nurses, neither are we psychiatrists, but we are prison officers, fundamentally. And we can... So does kicking the door make you an adult? When she said she you have to, you've got no manners, and you have to make a free year. But that's because children kick and scream when they don't get what they want. You told the governor this morning, after you smash two TVs up on Friday, that you're going to behave. You carry on kicking the door, love, if that's what you want to do. But you will not be coming off the unit and you will not be getting your association. What's the attitude for, Tone? It's like a playpen down here today. participate in stuff and you don't communicate with us. What happened then? To an extent, 
But then it's a case of leave me alone, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to that, engage just, with you. That's just me, though. I'd rather just go to sleep instead. But today you wouldn't get dressed. What would you get dressed for? Because that's part of participating in the regime. What we're trying to do is give you different, different outlets for your anger and your frustration, rather than just masking them over with drugs all the time. Do you just feel really angry? Mm -hmm. And you feel like it's bubbling up? It is bubbling up. It has been for a week, so. Well, that's because I've said to you before, you haven't got the crutches that you had. So you'll feel quite raw. Mm. Won't you? I think I need to sit there because my legs are killing me. I put to you that this image you give off of being um, hard and the leader of the pack and don't mess with me kind of girl, I, I said to you, I think that's a front to protect yourself, mm. to not appear weak or vulnerable. It's feel normal. How, how does it make you feel normal? It does. There's hundreds and hundreds of women who been able to lead drug-free lives. Yeah, lives that aren't centred around a prison. Because they want to see themselves in the future. Because they wanted to get off the drugs. Mm. And I don't. I'll never stop taking them. Never? No. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's always hope. It's... You have to choose to live rather than choose to die. And you've got to find reasons to live and there are hundreds and thousands if, if you'd look for them. Can't be asked. Can't be asked. Yeah. That has to be one of the most depressing conversations I've ever had. And the most sad. You know, she just has no hope in her life at all. And she's not even willing to allow anybody else to give her any hope. So, I don't know. That's it. There's disagreement about whether keeping women on constant watch is helping them or making them worse. Steve Hall wants to break the impasse, but some staff have reservations about the risks, especially as Flo has attempted to take her own life so recently. Is there an alternative response? other than this constant watch as, a, as a, an outcome? All she can perceive is the first chance she gets, she's going to hang herself, basically. She's going to tie ligatures around her neck. Flo, the governor's back to see you. Flo, can I just have a quick word and I'll leave you alone? Flo, just, just sit up for a minute. Just uh, two minutes and I'll leave you alone. You can have a rest. Taking you off your constant watch. Is that all right? Yeah. OK? Miss Horsfield's going to spend a bit of time chatting you to this evening. No, I'm not going to talk to nobody. You're not going to talk to anybody? No. OK, all right. I'm going to go, all right, but just want to let you know that you're off the constant watch. Okay. All right, so if there's anything you need to let us know, yeah? OK? Mm -hmm. See you later. We're trying to do something for you, Tony. It's much better if you try and engage with us. I've been trying for the last fucking month and where's he got me? No way. Do you want to come off this constant watch? No, I love being on it. All right, well, come and talk to us about it. We'll get you off it. Although that night Tony and Flo weren't watched constantly, they were kept on high levels of observation. The night passed without incident. She's still in a dirty protest. She's thrown all the clothing out of the window. Um, she's now naked in a cell. Over a month has passed since the dirty protester came to the CSRU, and so far, efforts to transfer her to a psychiatric hospital have not been successful. She's refused all medication. She refuses to interact with InReach, and she refuses to speak to her psychiatrist. She shouldn't be in prison. She should be in a mental institution, but... Seeing as we, um, we don't seem to have very many mental institutions or the funding or the beds, 
or anything else, or let's put everybody back in the community. Um, there's nowhere for, for these people to go. It certainly shouldn't be incarcerated in prison. We have made a great deal of progress in terms of trying to draw in more and more support. How does that feel? Things like mental health professionals working in prisons, and that's happening more and more. Um, but clearly it's not enough, and, and yes, of course, we need more of it. And there are promises of more, but right now that there isn't enough. I, I, you know, I, I'd be foolish to argue otherwise, really. We've been fortunate that we've not had a death at Star for some time now, but there will be another death here because you can't have a situation where people continue to do things that are really risky. Sooner or later, something's going to go wrong and those women are going to die. There's an optimistic view of the future, which is that we do get better at managing people with significant problems in prison. And that will have an impact on self-harm. That will have an impact on people's attempt to take their own lives. And we're seeing some progress there. A pessimistic view would be that there will be more and more women with more and more acute needs coming into prison. And all that will happen is my resources will increasingly get directed into dealing with incidents and crisis management. And eventually the system will break because it will just be overloaded. Flo was transferred to a secure unit after spending six months in prison on remand. Tony was returned to the wing and after sentencing was moved to another prison. Jackie's sentence was reduced on appeal. She self-harmed over 150 times during her time in prison.
The dirty protest prisoner was eventually found a bed in a psychiatric hospital. The woman suspected of taking an overdose killed herself shortly after being transferred to Holloway Prison. The minister in charge of prisons will be on tonight's news night.